Hello YouTube viewers, thank you for tuning into my channel today and I want to wish everyone out there a happy Valentine's Day for tomorrow the 14th and um, and I wanted to also speak about my parents which I love so much and as you all know they both passed away last year 2021 and it's it's been really really rough on me i have a picture of their uh 50th anniversary right there i have loads of pictures of them um so what happened was i'm not going to make the story too long but what happened was my mother had fallen in 2018 and after that fall she started getting better but for some reason, her health started spiraling down and she started having all these health problems. Um, first, she had like an itch that like wouldn't, we didn't know what it was. We went to a lot of doctors and they couldn't detect what it was, but whatever it was, it was coming from the inside and that's why she was having that effect of the itch. So. It turned out that she had bowel obstruction problems. So in September of 2020, September of 2020, she had a surgery and it was untanglement of her intestines. Her intestines were untangled. So they untangled that and she was feeling better. She went home, she was eating and everything. But then, in a few months, she started getting the same type of problems, bowel obstructions, uh, bowel obstruction problems. She couldn't um, hold anything in her, in her stomach. She would throw up everything. And she was really thinning. She thinned down to like 75 pounds. 75 pounds. She was really skinny. Um, so, in that February of 2021, she had a second operation which was also bowel obstruction but this time they cut part of her intestine out and they removed her appendix um, after that she was still in bad shape it was just one thing after the other um, she had fluid in her lungs her feet were swollen and you know pills on this side pills on that side all over the place you know she was taking too much medication and you know it wasn't really working you know, then she had, we took her to the cardiologist and the cardiologist said, take her to the hospital like right now. It was an emergency. So we took her to the hospital and, you know, she was holding fluid in the lungs and everything. And, you know, she was in bad shape and she died on us July 24th. She was depending on, on oxygen by that time. She had the tanks in her house and everything, you know, so we were all taking care of her. You know, my dad, my brother and I, you know, my brother and I work, but we were always there, you know, and my dad, you know, and everything. But um, she died on us on July 24th, and I was alone with my father that day, and we saw her die. You know, she died in her bed. Um, she already had signed something that she didn't want to be, you know, revived, if anything. You know, it was her choice, you know, but... You know, um, the ambulance came and, you know, like my my father at one point, we were both with her at her bedside trying to make her feel comfortable and everything and, you know, getting anything that she needed, water or whatever. And then I went to call my brother, you know, and I told him, you know, mom doesn't look good. Where are you? And my brother was on his way. My brother was on his way, but traffic kind of delayed him and everything. So when... When I went back in the room, she wasn't responsive anymore. I was, at, I, you know, I was telling her, Mom, you know, um, my brother, my brother Ivan. Ivan is coming, Ivan is coming, you know, he's coming soon. And I was looking at her and she wasn't responsive at all. You know, she was very stiff and she was gone. But she, she went like, well, I was on the phone with my brother, you know, so... It was really sad. Um, so she passed away July 24th, right? And then my father decided that he didn't want to live in the house anymore. 
he decided he wanted to go to a tropical place because he didn't want to deal with the snow, with the cold anymore. I live in New York here. This is where my father lived. So he decided to go to Puerto Rico. Do you believe that a month and a half into his stay in Puerto Rico, he gets hit by a car? I couldn't believe it. My brother's wife called us and, you know, she said, are you guys sitting down? You know, and I, I, we, we were like, and then she said, your father got hit by a car in Puerto Rico. And I looked at my hubby and I, I, we were like, oh my God. You know, we couldn't believe what we were hearing. So um, I ended up calling my uncle, you know, for more details. And my uncle was at the police. Uh, he was at the scene with the police. And he said that the ambulance was, had already taken my father. And, you know, so he didn't have a lot of details, but... You know, as everything unraveled, you know, I went over there, I took a flight. I got there before my brother. My brother was on another flight earlier. So when I got to Puerto Rico, I didn't know he had passed away that night. The night that, you know, we got the news, he passed away. He didn't make it. Um, my family told me the details about everything. There were four doctors attending to him. They gave him a lot of blood, but he wasn't, you know, retaining the blood that he needed. You know, he was gushing out. He got hit so hard. The trauma was head and back. And he was gushing out blood from nose, ears, mouth, from everywhere. And they just couldn't save him, you know. So my family told me all the details. So when I got to Puerto Rico, my brother had already gotten there. So when I got to the, to the uh, I didn't even get to the hospital. He was, you know. Um, when I got to the airport, I still was asking my brother, what's dad's condition? What's dad's condition? And then my brother told me, you know, he left us, you know. So I hugged my brother and, you know, you could imagine the rest, you know. It was really hard. It's been hard on both of us. And, um, you know, but we always have to look forward. You know, life presents us with what it is. You know, we're born, and we're born to live life in whatever way it's supposed to be, and then we die, and it's going to happen to all of us. You know, so we have to, you know, move on and just keep our family members in our hearts. They'll always be in our hearts, and, um, you know, it's, it's so sad, really sad. I just, I'm still in shock. I mean, it's February... And I think about it all the time. How did this happen? I know the boulevard where it happened. It was a four-lane lane boulevard. But I just don't know. Did he make a bad judgment? Was he in the right? Like, was he standing where he was supposed to? And the lady claims she didn't see him. You know, it was 7.30 at night, so it was dark. You know, I think it was drizzling too. All those factors. But I really don't know exactly what caused it like that he made a make a bad judgment or what but he got hit very hard you know trauma to the head and back um so i replayed in my mind all the time i'm like wow and then five months almost five months after my mother passed away so it's really been really um really hard but i'm hanging in there and i'm pretty strong and you know what you know what i want to tell you we lose family members and one day family members are going to lose us because we might have kids or you know we have family members younger than us and we're going to go one day we're all going to be older at some point and we're all going to leave this world and there's always going to be somebody behind who's crying who's who's emotional who's hurt by our passing but we all are going and um you know, so we got to think that our parents or our loved ones, anybody who has passed away, that they're in a better place, you know. And we have to, you know, continue life, you know. Um, so I have these pictures here to show you. So look at this. This was their uh, six, 50, 50th anniversary. So that was them. That wasn't so long ago. my mom that's my mom right there very sweet lady 
very lovable. She was very humble. You know, I would give her um, anything I would give her. She was like happy with it, you know, very humble lady. And here's my dad right there. Very intelligent man, very strong minded, very strong minded. He was good with numbers and he had a lot of humor in him. So then this picture here, this picture here, um, on this side, that's my hubby and I'm, I'm the one in the green, of course, and my parents and then my brother's wife and my brother. So that was the 50th anniversary celebration. Let's see what else. Oh, look at this one. This one was at the same event, and I'm there hugging my father, congratulating him, right there. And these are my nephews. Those are my nephews. They were there, too. It was just a little group. We didn't make, you know, a big event out of it, but it was very nice. Uh, well, I have tons of pictures, tons of pictures. Here, as you can see, my parents were the type that, you know, they were always holding hands. They would go to the supermarket and they would go in the parking lot. They were holding hands at their age and everything. So that was so cute. You know, where they lived, they called them the lovebirds. This, a lady told me about that. I went to pick up some mail and she told me that, oh, you know, we used to call them the lovebirds. You know, uh, Another time, I'll make another video and, you know, I'll share more with you. This one was their 25th anniversary. And I'm in there. I'm the one in the pink sweater. That was their 25th anniversary. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video here. And remember what I told you. You know, we are all going at one point or another. It's unfortunate that... You know, some people die in tragic ways. Some people don't even know, realize that they, like, they, they pass away in their sleep. You know, but either way, we all have to go and we have to be strong when we lose our family members and um, continue life. Well, thank you for watching and thank you for your condolences because I know that a lot of YouTube viewers have you know, sent me condolences and, you know, I thank you very much. Okay, so thanks for watching.